I want to thank everyone who's been watching the series, The Road to PIC, where Kim lets you in on a very vulnerable side of learning how to fly. And I know this last video especially has created a bunch of burning questions. We see all your comments below and we want to respond to them. And a few of those comments are, well, of course, what happened to the engine? Why didn't I tell you in the video? That's my bad. I take all the blame for that. You also uh, want to know why didn't uh, Kim just simply apply the carb heat? Was it a carb heat issue? Why did they do that impossible turn? So we're going to answer all those burning questions. But before we do, I want to thank everybody for their fantastic comments. You guys have really supported Kim through this process and you have really helped boost her along. And uh, don't think that that goes unnoticed and unappreciated. So as always, guys, if you like these videos, hit that thumbs up subscribe button and uh, ring all for notifications. But please, please, please share these videos with friends. Let everyone know that you like what's happening here and that you're enjoying this series. So some of your top questions were, well, what happened to the engine? Why didn't Kim use a carb heat? And should they have done the impossible turn? So before we can talk about what happened, let's first talk about what engine we're talking about. The Cessna 172 has a Lycoming IO360. It is a fuel injected, horizontally opposed, naturally aspirated, air and oil cooled, 160 horsepower, four stroke engine. Now that we know what engine we're talking about, let's take a look at this animation on how the engine actually works. Let's take a look at the cycle of a typical four-stroke engine. The process starts with the intake, or induction stroke, where the piston is moving in toward the crankshaft. The intake valve must be opened to allow the fuel-air mixture to flow into the cylinder. As the piston starts moving out, away from the crankshaft, both valves are closed and the fuel-air mixture is compressed in the cylinder. This stroke is called the compression stroke. As the piston nears the end of its outward travel, the fuel-air mixture is ignited and the rapid burning and expansion of the fuel pushes the piston toward the crankshaft in the power stroke. During the exhaust stroke, the last stroke in the cycle, the piston moves out and the exhaust valve is opened and the burned gases are forced out of the cylinder. As a cylinder is undergoing this cycle, the other cylinders are each going through different parts of the cycle. No matter how many cylinders an engine has, each of the cylinders will complete the cycle every time the crankshaft makes two revolutions. Now that you have a basic understanding of how the engine works, for a deeper dive into the engines and even the private pilot series, be sure to check out Sporty's private pilot course. Several of you noted that Kim did not put in any carb heat, and that is a great attention to detail and a great first instinct. However, being that this is an IO360, a fuel-injected engine, there is no carburetor, therefore there is no carb heat. Well, Christopher, what was the problem? Well, simply said they lost a cylinder. This four-cylinder engine became a three-cylinder. A four-stroke engine relies on the valves opening and closing. One of the valves was stuck open, and with that valve being open, that cylinder is not able to create a combustion and therefore create power. When an engine loses a cylinder, it creates a vibration. On a four-cylinder engine, it's even worse than on a six-cylinder engine as the imbalance is even greater. That imbalance creates a vibration, and that vibration can be very discomforting. Not knowing exactly what's going on, it definitely creates a situation where you want to get on the ground as soon as possible. And that brings us to the 180 turn back to the runway, dubbed the impossible turn. Is it really an impossible turn? Not really, so why do they call it that? Well, the same reason why they call Iceland ice. They're trying to discourage you from making that your first choice. Often when there's an engine failure after takeoff, you have an option in front of you or on either side of you, but too often people were assuming they had to go back to the runway, often when they're too low or even too slow. While we could debate all day long if the impossible turn should even be attempted, we can all agree that it is something that can be accomplished and accomplished safely. In fact, when learning to fly a Pilatus, it's actually a required procedure to master. 
Well, I hope this follow-up video has helped answer most of your common questions. As always, guys, if you like these videos, hit that thumbs up, subscribe button. The biggest compliment we can receive is your subscription to the channel. And be sure to ring that bell for notifications and hit all. And please share this video with friends, family, and on your social media. Kim has given us a raw insight into what it's like to go through private pilot training. And so let's please, let's help spread that word.